Police arrived at Anthony Soule's home last Thursday to charge him with rape. They didn't find him there, but what they discovered was horrific. There was a stench so awful they searched his home and found two bodies in the living room. You know, we've never seen seen anything like it, so it's um, it, it's very challenging. Uh, uh, from an investigative standpoint, from an emotional standpoint for all the investigators. They arrested Sol later a few blocks away. They told him to get down. He got down. He didn't give him any trouble. He didn't try to run. He was taken to the district, fingerprinted and identified, and stated that he was the suspect. Soon, more bodies. Four in the backyard, a head in a bucket. So we had two in the third floor out in the air. We had two bodies under dirt and we had five buried in the yard. So they're all decomposing at different rates and they have the features of months to years. The victims, women, suspected cause of death, strangulation. In all, 11 bodies and counting. Family members of missing women came to the scene looking for news of loved ones. <laughs> the fear is the unknown. Mm -hmm. We don't know anything. If we knew something, we'd feel better. We, the fear is the unknown. This is the man police suspect is behind these horrific crimes. But when he appeared in court this morning, he didn't look like a monster. You've been charged with a number of felony crimes within this jurisdiction. But a stunned judge denied bond. Uh, this is, without question, the most serious set of allegations that I've ever faced. Anthony Sowell was once a Marine, but was convicted of viciously attacking and trying to rape a woman. After 15 years in prison, he came home and registered as a sex offender. He always played by the rules. So Mr. Soule was registered and compliant, uh, very compliant. He maintained uh, one residence um, from the time he got out of prison in 2005, uh, you know, up until right now. So not only was he stable as far as residence, um, he uh, reported in a timely fashion. Never had an issue with Mr. Soule of being non-compliant. Raymond Cash, a local business owner, said Sowell not only appeared to be as ordinary as everyone else in the neighborhood, he trusted him to look out for criminal behavior. I talked to him every day. He, he called us up watching out for somebody had broken our business once. He called us up watching out for the, he's watching out for the business, you know, make sure. I gave my cell phone number. If you see anything, call me. Can you imagine that? Sowell apparently exploited the system, keeping a low profile. And when he registered as a sex offender, the law only required that he give his address. It did not require authorities to warn his neighbors. Would you ever think anything like this could happen here? Number one, no one even knew about him being a predator. All right, that was, uh, uh, the system dropped the ball on that, I believe. If this were the suburbs and if it were white victims, do you think it would have happened this way? No, no. They would have put out something to let them know that these those people are missing. This is a black area. Very low income people stay here. We do the best we can as far as taking care of our own, but it would never happen like this if it was in a, a better neighborhood, no. Police visited Seoul's home to see if he still lived there in September, but they were not allowed to go inside. We are not obligated or actually allowed under law to enter the offender's residence, uh, of course. Uh, certainly we would need some probable cause or to search or to actually enter the residence. There were other missed opportunities. In December of last year, Sowell was arrested after he allegedly assaulted another woman at the same house. But the victim later dropped the charges, and the sheriff's sex offender unit says city police never notified them. Authorities say Sowell enticed local women with the promise of alcohol and drugs. His victims that we know about, uh, he met there uh, on the street in the neighborhood close to his home um, and was able to get them to their house either of their own volition or through some force. Another alleged victim recently escaped by jumping out of the window of his home. She was naked. With that, police finally locked in. Authorities say that with thousands of known sex offenders living among us, the system is simply overwhelmed. Our latest survey indicates that there's 686,000 registered sex offenders in the United States. Uh, Two-thirds of America's sex offenders are not in jails and prisons, they're in our community. And the system that we have to do monitoring, supervision, follow-up once they return to the community is just overwhelmed. Tonight, authorities identified the first victim. Her name is Tanya Carmichael.
She was 52 years old. At least I know where she is now, and I can put her to rest. She's with God. I wish for him to have a not-so-easy way to hell and gasoline draws. That's how I feel, because even that's lenient. Tomorrow, the police are expanding their search, checking abandoned houses in a half-mile radius. They hope they don't find more bodies. I'm Pierre Thomas for Nightline in Cleveland.